You're listening to a DM podcast. One of my favourite traditions of five of my life is the six question. This is when, at the end of every interview, I ask my guests who they want to hear take the five of my life challenge next. We take their nominations seriously and follow them all up. It's led to some fabulous episodes. Julia Gillard, Australia's first female Prime Minister, took the challenge because Richard Glover nominated her. The role of women in actually getting them to sign the peace accord and stop massacring each other was they threatened public nudity. They were demonstrating that the Muslim women and the Christian women got together and said, enough is enough, the men are ruining this place. You know, we're not going to go until you you know, bang your heads together and sort it out, and they still wouldn't say, we're going to strip off if you don't. Yes, which to, which to our ears sounds, yeah, yeah, I mean, almost comedic, doesn't it? And if a group of women protesting a particular cause uh, went to a centre of an Australian city and said, we're going to strip off, I suspect uh, watching crowds would say, whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a little bit interesting. We'll get the phone up to take some footage and uh, be circulating it around on social media. Uh, but in their culture, it was an unthinkable act, um, an act that could only be born of the greatest desperation. You know, people couldn't comprehend that women would protest that way. And so it garnered attention and in doing so created another piece of pressure to get you know, tribal leaders, warlords to enter into the Accra Peace Accords. Dare Jennings, the founder of Mambo and Deus Ex Machina, came on because he was Remo's suggestion. My sister was a, was a, a well-known writer. She edited books of poetry. She was a poet. But her first book was Snake. And like every good author, they have to kind of settle all their scores with their family. And this was really what this was. Now, and I was completely torn because... On one hand, it's a beautifully written book. And, you know, she, it it was said that it was on the shortlist for the Booker Prize shortlist. It was being considered for the Booker Prize shortlist. Uh, It was beautifully written and incredibly heartfelt, but it was fucking mean. Like, it was so, my mother in particular, because my sister and I, my sister and my mother never got on. I, I got on wonderfully with my mother. But so she portrays this incredibly unhappy, vicious sort of cruel, woman. Cruel, yes. Yeah, oh. cruel woman, which was completely undeserved. And she, but my mother used to read the bulletin from cover to cover, and I didn't want her to read the book because you know, it, was, it was too horrible. But the, the opening paragraph of the review for the book was, this is an amazing book, and it features one of the most despicable women in Australian literary history yeah. or something. My poor mother it broke her heart. It was, it was terrible. You can pick me in there because I'm the vacuous no ideas, younger brother. And Deborah Francis White, the founder and host of the global phenomenon The Guilty Feminist, recorded an episode because Mary Custis wanted to hear her take the challenge. And I suddenly realised what it is to lose your human rights because he hadn't had the right to a doctor or a lawyer for five years. He hadn't had the right to stand on any piece of ground he was standing on and breathe the air. What happens when you're a refugee, if you can't get political asylum somewhere, is that the only place that you will live is somewhere you will surely die. And what that means is it's effectively illegal for you to live on planet Earth. And nowhere are you entitled to breathe the air. And that was such, it like hit me in the stomach. I just went, oh my God. Like he was like, I'm a person again. I'm a full person again. Because refugees are treated like cattle. They're not treated like people. They're shoved on, they're shunted on, nobody wants you, you don't have a right to anything, you don't have a right, you don't have a right to education, you have a right to, to work a job, you don't have a right to earn money, you don't have a right to anything. So you're standing in a queue in a refugee camp hoping for somebody to so a volunteer to make, you know, to give you some food that somebody else has done a charitable donation for, which is no way to live. You know, there's no purpose in that, there's no dignity in that. And Refugees are so desperate for just any opportunity to have a little patch of ground where they can start again and find an opportunity. That's just an amazing story and it incredibly speaks to the generosity of of spirit that you would welcome him into your home and your family. Is he still with you, Steve? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three, Three and a half years later. Steve is as much family to me as anyone in the world. Wonderfully, it doesn't just lead to famous guests. It has also prompted me to interview people I otherwise wouldn't necessarily have ever thought to approach. 
Stuart Dickinson, Australia's most capped rugby referee, nominated Alison Myrams. Alison was the CEO of building firm Roberts Co. at the time, and in that role transforming the construction industry. She might not have the global profile of Julia, Dare or Deborah, but her episode was every bit as fascinating. As a group, famous or not, I call them the Sixers. And next week we're adding another member to the club, as Francis Fitzgerald is my guest. Francis is the former Deputy Prime Minister of Ireland and was nominated by my previous guest, Nancy Klein. Be sure to tune in next week to hear this inspirational leader discuss her five.